Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Gravy here. We are at Floored Media here in Rockville Center, New York. Huge shout out to Jay for letting us use the studio. Today we're going to be interviewing one of my favorites, my second favorite surfer in the world. He doesn't know it yet. His name is Cliff Scudin, and he's a legend. Let's rip. Talk to the wide. All right, I'm just going to go. I'm, I'm going to start this thing out heavy. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Top five. So I'm just going to I'm going to start out saying my favorite surfer in the world is Andrew Cotty. Oh, wow. But I'm going to list off my top five, and okay. it could surprise some people. Fifth would be Jamie O'Brien. Fourth would be Will Scudin. Wow. Third, Kelly Slater. And number two is Cliff Scudin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Cliff Scudin. I can't even believe that you would even say that. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even to be on That's the, an honest statement. I mean, um I'm 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 uh blown away that you even started this with that. The vibes like, are I'm right. really I'm really like I can't even believe that you said that <laughs> that I was <laughs> your top five best surfers. Ben Gravy just said that. I'm like kinda <laughs> in shock right now. All I right. think you're f***ing with me. No, I'm not. I'm dead serious. Okay, okay. I'm actually not I'm a even fan a of the, I'm I don't a fan even of the anymore. obscure. I only foil board. How does it feel to take <laughs> a 40-foot lip on the head? I don't head? even surf, so. I saw you paddling okay, into okay. a wave at Nazare, and it was about oh. 70 feet by my standards. I know you guys judge them differently than me. Yeah. But there's about 25 feet of white foam hitting you. Yeah. How did that feel? All right. This is, this is, hold on. I'm interviewing you, right? <laughs> We're no, just no. having a chat. No, dude. no, I know. Um, yeah, it's big wave surf, big wave surfing. I was not prepared for this, but big, big wave surfing. Um, honestly, uh, I heard 70 foot waves, Nazare. Yep. Taking it on my head. You Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? It happened a couple times. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> um, but the first time it happened, I uh, I tried to paddle it. I saw years that. Ago, yeah. And um, that's what I'm talking about. And I skipped down the waves, and I got blown up, and uh, I blew my eardrum. Yeah. And that was. So I blew my eardrum, and mm, that's uh, all I got that rescued. By Hugo. Wow. And that, noodles, that's all that no, happened? You hear noodles? Noodles is going. She's she, excited. Yeah, so, She's stoked. So Hugo rescues me, and um, it was the day before the big, big day. That wasn't the and big, I think it big was, day? I think it was in like 2015 or something like that, 16. And uh, That was impressive, Cliff. Because like coming from she okay? me, like I have 100%. I think she's just excited to be on the <laughs> podcast. I have 100% confidence in my surfing capabilities when i drop in on a wave i'm not questioning anything i'm just looking for the lip or the barrel or what to do and i i've surfed some pretty big waves with your younger brother will by my standards yeah but what you did what you did was mind-blowing do we need nice. to uh i think does she do this all the time yeah she needs some water noodles are you okay <laughs> I think I'm like, I think I'm heating her up too much. <laughs> too much body heat in this chair. <clears throat> Noodles. 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 Now she's good. She needed uh, <laughs> her airway to be propped up. Yeah, she needs some water. Who's got some water? I think Will's working on it. Okay, so. But, um, okay, so. Then the next day, the big, big day, and I blew my eardrum, slight tear in my eardrum, so I had a little bit of e off equilibrium. Casual. And I remember I remember when I was out in the waves, and they're like, do you want one? And I was like, it was so good. And I was like, yes, please. And I remember, uh, here goes Noodles now. All right, Noodles here. Noodles is about to drink some water. The world has... Good girl, Noodles. Noodles is psyched now. That was my gift to, to Florid Media. That tray? Yeah. Noodles is gnarly. 
Oh, she's going in now. And then, so you're out there on the next day. It was the big, big day. Yeah, so. They, they, they drive up to you on the ski, and they're like, yo, Cliff, do you want? It's your turn. And I remember Kaylee. Is this a toe day or a paddle toe day? Toe day. Okay. It was a toe day. The first day was paddle, and they were towing because <laughs> it was, like, massive. And um, First day was paddle for you. Yeah, and then <laughs> <laughs> I just remember getting towed into a wave, and I, I it was going so fast that, like, I couldn't get to my bottom turn like i couldn't like hit the bottom turn and this thing i don't know if we could bring up a photo of it or yeah we'll find video. it and it just and then i remember being like oh my god if i would have hit the bottom turn i would have probably gotten like the craziest biggest barrel of my life but instead i just kept the same line and the thing just lit me up it just <laughs> mowed me down i mean it made it made for a sick ride and good clip <laughs> yeah but uh yeah that was the, nuts the impressive thing definitely is remembers that. like if you <laughs> if you break down the the amount of people in the entire world who are big wave surfers and i'm talking have surfed a wave that's 40 feet or bigger the percentage is so low it's probably a couple hundred people maybe yeah. maybe oh, maybe less than two thousand people right gotta be and then you're just out there casually, like you run surf camps, and and you're just like, whatever. I'm I'm a big wave guy. I'll paddle into this fifty footer. All good. Well, yeah, not anymore. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'll get to. I'll mess around on the toe, and I'll go with my brother Will on some trips. Yeah, safety. But those days of hucking myself over fifty foot ledges are done. Like I've broken too many ribs, my ears. I'm you know I'm getting older now. I'm not as fast to my feet. You know, I feel like, you know, I, I, I've taken a lot of wipeouts, <laughs> you know, part of, part of big wave surfing is wiping out. And honestly, I don't know how many more times I want to wipe out, you know, I, I, I feel like that's a justifiable it's not, yeah. statement. It's not, you know, um, I look at it as like. The ride, and then it's the wipeout. Like, how many more times do I want to experience that? Well, if you landed every wave, you could do it for another 10 or 20 years, yeah, right? But <laughs> so, <clears throat> There's no guarantee. So what's up with you with, with big wave surfing? What's in in store for... Um, Are we going to see you at Nazare this year? I think so. I, I mean, I'll go, like, to the town of Nazare. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Wait, like, you'll, you technically yet? you'll see me in have Nazare. You there? I served Nazare on the smallest day of the year on my seven foot soft top. You didn't see my clips. <laughs> um, I got I a mean, bomb. I watch your YouTube channel, but I'm not on like every channel. I like every time. I got a I got a decently sized one, probably a 15 foot face, and I straightened out when I should have gone left, or I kind of tried to go right and I should have gone left, and I got hammered, dude. It was an insider, but it was only a double over. It was only. Twice over my head or once over my head. So I couldn't imagine what a 50 footer feels like. Like I was tripping, dude. Bugging. Place is bugged out. It's crazy. It's it's honestly, I, th I can't wait till you go <clears throat> and experience it because, you know, to go there, to have the team, the support. Yeah. I During that event and contest and like especially just being a part of that, you look up the cliff. And I swear, like, I, I've used this before. Like, you almost feel like you're a gladiator in, like, medieval times. I swear to God. And and you look you kind up. Of and, are. and there's, like, thousands and thousands of people lined up. And then, like, you're on these jet skis. And you're, con like, literally flying around trying to ride the biggest mountains of waves. And it's, it's so mind-blowing because... Like the energy and like the the cheers and like it's just the arena is yeah. insane. No, it's it's completely it's absurd. It's totally it's it's beyond anything. Yeah, to experience and I can't wait till you do experience that. And I'm sure you know with the support and the people and the safety, you're going to be in good hands. I hope I hope that if my day ever comes and and I am in the position to head into a bomb at Nazaria that I'm ready for it and I and I want it. I think uh, for me that's the main thing because like when I first started getting into the big wave surfing, I was scared and I was like, I don't need to do this. 
You know, like I, yeah. my career is surfing knee high waves. Like I don't need to do this, but like something inside of me wanted to do it. So I'm hoping that if I ever do end up out there on a bombing day that I'm ready and I want to do it. But, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a dream of mine, but I think it would be epic. I think it'd be radical. So what's the biggest wave you ever surfed? <laughs> um, tried to surf or actually what's the biggest wave out you ever took off on um or paddled into i know you guys don't like to talk about this stuff yeah so successfully surfed i would say i don't know like uh, uh it's hard to put a number on it i liked it when i was starting the big wave surf kaylee mamala would always be like hawaiian scale yeah so he would always be like 20 foot hawaiian bro which is like he- which, which is, is like, like a 50 foot wave yeah, that's pretty like much. 40 and then 30 and i remember like when i was uh my first experience big wave surfing one of the first experience will brought me in with like they had like the movie with garrett mcnamara and like rick solomon and like it was like the day of the big day like one of these winters in hawaii and i just came in i flew in and i remember like all right cliff you go on the back of the ski with garrett and <laughs> and uh and i was like sick let's go i'm like amped you know i was like i was definitely like new to the to being out there so i remember flying we went we we launched at um backyards and we were going to like Hale- so this is oahu oahu going to like <laughs> Phantoms? We were actually or no, Himalayas. We were going to Outer Logs. We okay, Outer check Logs. Outer Logs. Okay, and uh, oddly enough, I remember, I've surfed that before. Yeah, you you surfed Outer Logs. I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, which is insane. It's it gnarly. Was, it's so gnarly. Yeah. And Garrett, I remember going over these waves, and like he's very, like this is like new to me, and like he with a jet ski, he like, there's, you know. A very like i would say not risky for me to put a ski in where he was putting the ski yeah like he was literally on the ledge they put it in like, the lip yo he's like this is a 30 foot hawaiian and i'm like standing on the back like huh. <laughs> <laughs> yo and like garrett's screaming like i think uh yeah th- there's another level I, what's funny is after i went to oregon with will i ended up in hawaii that same year like a month and a half later and it was super swell Saturday. It was yeah. 20. Which year was that? 20 at 20. Will, how big was that swell? 20 at 20? It was, there was, I saw an 80 foot wave. Yeah. Okay. Kalani Chapman, in my opinion, rode an 80 foot wave that yeah. day. And I was out there. I saw Will. Will went nuts. Will got at least a 55 foot wave. Yeah. And he freaking bottom turned and it just got what did he make it dude he didn't wow. make it but he did jump off and pin yeah. drop and i was like i was sitting out there that was before i surfed and i was looking at him like i was just i, I was like i don't know if i'm ready for that yeah because i don't know if i'm i don't know if i have the skill set or the balls to pin drop was there or did the they timing have float back then flotation yeah this was like two years ago oh, okay we were floating all day but there was there was 50 foot sets all day long 50 foot my scale yeah so 25 30 foot hawaiian but jamie and kalani chapman were telling me there's no such thing as a wave bigger than 60 feet but i don't believe that i saw waves bigger than 60 feet that day 100 percent. that was baffling but that's the day we surfed out our logs yeah like no no I guess the bigger waves that I've surfed is at Nazare. I would have yeah. to say, like even in Hawaii, on you know, I obviously not as long as other people in the surfing world, but what I've seen, it, I don't know what it is—the eerie feeling of the cold water, the denser, the darker. It's just like when you're in Hawaii, like it's like blue water, it's warm, it's beautiful. You're gnarly. No, uh, you're not. That's how I can put it. That's how I can put an exclamation point on that conversation. So tell me about last night. Yeah. So I'm so happy you came. I'm happy we did this. I remember we exchanged a, a few text messages of like, we have to do this. And after the first time I watched your movie, something. And then like, uh, you know, when you have something that you really, I'm sure, you know, like I watched the movie and I was like, I have to. I want to do everything I can, everything and anything to show this 
in our hometown and try to get as many people there as possible because it, the message was so positive. Thanks, dude. And I really, I, I loved what you <clears throat> said and what you did. Thank you. And it took a lot to, for you to do that. And, but then, you know, time went by and we didn't, at that first moment, I was like, we have to do it. And then got busy and things happened. But I always had something like eating at me, like, you got to do it, Cliff. You got to do it. You really have to. So we were like halfway through the summer. And I'm like, I got to do this. I have to put in the effort of contacting Long Beach Movie Theater and like doing the whole premiere thing. So um, I think in life, when I get those little inklings in my head, of like somebody telling me to do something, mm -hmm. I have to listen to it as, as best as I can. You know, yes, yeah. I I did, and I'm happy. I you know. So. Well, I gotta say, like having you and Will push me all the time, and uh, Jay, you're all right. He wants you closer to your mic. <clears throat> Sorry. Having you and Will push me all the time, and you just having the that. Like you were so committed to me coming up here and us doing this movie. And I really appreciate that. And you guys do not have to do what you do for me. And you don't have to bring me in the way that you bring me in. And you, you know what I mean? And it's, it's an honor for me to come up here and, and you guys have an amazing surf community up here. And it's amazing that I've been able to be a part of it. It's, it's, we love you, Veronica. it's a total no, honor. Your message. Cliff. And even before, like I knew of Ben Gravy, like obviously, like you, you, I had no like that movie really showed like your true colors and you put everything out there. Stoked, dude! And Thank I'm you. I'm like, you know, and yeah, like <clears throat> you know, you say that, but like I feel like with you too, like thank, thank you for coming here and being a part of Scoot and Surf. Dude, know? I'm honored, completely you honored. Know, we're, and we're on, you know what I mean? Like it's stoked. totally mutual. Where and. uh what we're talking about right now is last night we had the For the Dream documentary premiere at the Long Beach Cinema 4. Cliff put the entire thing together. Jay put the letters up. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, Floored Jay. Media. And, uh, yeah, so Scoot and Surf put the entire event together. We did two showings. Um, kids were stoked. There's like, over 200 people that showed up last night, and uh, we got to sign posters give out a bunch of stickers. We gave away soft tops. The community was absolutely frothing and we got to share a really important message. That's really important to me. And, uh, it was amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Cliff. Yeah. Like, like it's so much more than like, you know, even when, um, Irons did his movie premiere when, uh, the Andy Irons film mm -hmm. and, you know, we did a premiere there and there was a unbelievable message in that film about mental illness mm -hmm. and the whole and like that this is like i would say like the same tier of type of movie wow where, you know obviously not the same because it's totally different yeah aspects yeah. but meaning like there was so much more to it not just like a surf film yeah dude it was uh, i think uh i think that's a, an important part of my journey um and it's cool to have people come up to me even kids come up and they're like dude i didn't even expect that or like parents who have been following me for years they'll come up and be like wow like that was so much more than i came here for like i came here for a surf movie that was yeah. crazy and it's funny because some people come to see a high impact surf movie and then they end up watching that documentary and they're just like whoa what did i just watch yeah this is nuts but it was great so thank you thanks stoked i um i like the q a there was a lot of good questions i think you know having you there like you could show a movie all day but like actually having you there and you know being a part of it with with me too like i was sitting in the front like i couldn't believe what you were saying like the things that we were saying it was dude. awesome and um that i think was really special and i think you know some people were asking there was like a lot of great questions there was one about i like when you said you know i wake up with negative thoughts sometimes yeah you know and and you're like, but, you know, you could focus on it. Like, just the way that you were saying, like, staying in the positive. Like, I don't know. I'm sure you could share more. Well, about it's it. like <clears throat> being a human being 
you know, people look at me from the outside and they say, oh, that's Ben Gravy. He's stoked. Like, he, yeah. he has no worries in the world. But it's not true. I wake up the same the same way everyone else wakes up. I wake up with negative thoughts. I go to sleep with negative thoughts. Negative stuff creeps into my mind throughout the day. But what I was saying last night is, like, positivity is not something that's given to you. It's something that you have to work for. And um, recently someone told me, actually, that your body actually kills off cells and rebuilds new cells every day and like for some reason that that went like so deep for me because i was like whoa like that makes so much sense because not only mentally what you put into your day right now will affect you later but physically as well so i think we're a lot more connected mentally and physically right. and spiritually than we give ourselves credit for and i just think if you have that energy in the right place something can come here and be like oh dude like some negative thought and if, if you're just like, you know what, nah, I'm going this way, you'll, you're just going to end up in, in such a better place. And it might not feel worth it right now. You know, like in this moment, it might not feel worth it to be positive. But down the line, God or the universe or whatever it is, is going to reveal to you why it was worth it to be positive in that heavy moment. So, yeah, but last night was crazy because you never know what you're going to get. And after the first showing... There was a couple like older guys, middle-aged guys that had those really crazy, hard-hitting, deep questions. And <laughs> we we were getting deep like in a yeah. movie theater in Long Beach, New York. And it was just like, whoa. Like, th that's the cool thing for me too. Like, if, if this never came together, like I never would have had that experience with those guys. And it's like, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I appreciate which is, it. It's, it's, it, it, was a, it was incredible, I yeah. think in this world that we live in today and you know i'm around a lot of kids a lot of adolescent like people that are very easily like they're 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 getting older they're learning new things their peer pressure is big they're yeah making choices life changing choices you know and to just give them that side of it and maybe maybe hopefully you know that could have not maybe not at that moment but always remember hey there is another side of life where you know you can actually make a difference and that's what it really was all about even yeah. if it was just one person totally i said that to jordan when we were on the way to the theater i was like if one person in this whole theater two sold out shows if one person is affected by this movie then i did my job yeah and that's i think it's important to never let go of that I guess like that appreciation for what you're doing in life because at the end of the day a lot of people are going to see it maybe not everyone's going to feel it and then only a certain amount of people are going to be affected by it so i think uh that's and then the 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 other thing we touched on last night was like it's important for people to go out whether it's you or i go out and keep doing what we're doing because we don't know what we're affecting people every day, but you don't know what's going to make someone's mind switch. Because you might be looking at this big thing as like, oh, if I do this, I can get people to like see, see life more positively. But it might just be how you lead by actions in your daily life. Yeah. They might see you doing small things and be impressed by that. And that might be the thing that triggers them to change their life. So I think if, if you, you just have to keep following your heart and, and that's, that's kind of what's important. I think that's like you as a person. It's like you, you weren't promoting it. You were, the people are attracted to you. you. Meaning like you weren't there like, Hey, you know, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't, look, this is what I like. Yeah. Look, look at me. Like meaning like, um, people were attracted to your, like your, maybe that could influence them by like, you weren't telling somebody like how to live their life. Yeah. I like, will, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's I think important. In, in, yeah. Like, I think that's really, yeah. With uh, any type of somebody that's struggling, I think learning by somebody's actions rather than like, you know, reading it in a textbook or yeah. hearing it from, you know, a guidance counselor or somebody telling you, you know, you're making the wrong choices or it really has to come from within. Yeah. A hundred percent. It really helps you know, yeah. what you did. Um, and I'm also, I'm also happy that we live in a world where my story can be shared and you can, and we together can give these kids an option to look at something else.
Because, you know, like modern day social media, there's a lot of things that are glorified that might not be the healthiest lifestyles, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But at least these kids can come out to a movie that you guys are back in yeah. and we can be like, yo, look, like maybe, like not everyone has to be sober, you know? Like yeah. I don't believe that everyone yeah. has to be sober. Certain people do, I'm one of them. But we give them an option to come out and see what life can be like if you if you want to live a certain way. And, and uh, but like you said, I'm not telling anyone to do anything. It's kind of like an open-ended book. Like you can read the pages and choose choose to follow what you want or choose to choose to believe in what you want and uh i don't know it was just great it was a great experience that's yeah like there's some people that can drink normally yeah you know totally and that's i'm like that's great you know but there's other people you know like when you were drinking like that was not normal. No. <laughs> so, like, so if you're one of those people that doesn't drink normal, maybe you're like, oh, sh-, you know, maybe I should yeah. get into. No, nah, because once you put that substance in your body, you know, it makes me do crazy things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you uh, your cousin said something awesome on the beach today. He was, uh, he said, um, if it changes I, I man, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was something like if it changes how you act even a little bit and you know that how you act, even if it's a little bit different, is not good for you, why would you do it? And I was I was listening to that. I was like, dude, how I yeah, how I acted when I was drunk was yeah. not who I wanted to be at all. At all. But for some reason I kept going back to the watering hole. I don't know why. It took me forever, but here I guess here I am seven years later. I love that analogy when people are like, you know, if you're allergic to strawberries <laughs> yeah. and you just keep eating strawberries and every time you eat strawberries, you break out in hives, <laughs> you have to go to the hospital. Yeah. Why would you keep eating strawberries? Yeah. Like any normal person would be like, you know what? I'm going to stick away from those strawberries because I don't want to end up in the hospital or <laughs> whatever. But that's the scary part. You know, it's like, I did it for years. I kept eating strawberries for a long time. <laughs> strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, you're doomed, but um I think that's uh that's a crazy thing about it. It's like you 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 forget about you forget about what happens to you. Yeah. After you eat oh, the for straw- sure. You know what I'm saying? It's for- like you always think of like the first one that tastes so good. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> then you forget about what's going to happen. Because your first couple of drinks make you feel great. Yeah. You're just sitting there all happy, cheery, smile from ear to ear. I don't know. It's it's actually weird. I forget. I forget what that feels like. So what's your goal in life? Um, You know, I'm 40 now. I'm going, I'm like. Let's clap it up for that. Know, <laughs> no, but, <laughs> you know, so. We got everybody on that one. I Cliff. have a beautiful wife. You know, I have my dog, you know, we we're, you know, life is good. I'm, I'm super blessed. I'm grateful. I'm like, I couldn't be, you know, going through this world and this time, you know, I have friends that, you know, people that I've grown up with and, you know, this world is nuts and people, they don't, I'm just super blessed to be here. I'm so happy, you know, like. I've had a lot of friends, people that have died through the years. You know, I think that, that was, I was talking to one person, you know, it was like, I don't know if I'm just, we're getting older. So more people obviously would die that we've yeah. run paths with the longer you live. Uh-huh. Right. That's pretty, uh, but, or yes, of course that, but also at the same point, like we've had so many people like in our close communities that have suddenly passed away, especially with our family and just yeah. recently um my cousin Casey that just passed away right before the summer I know um you know he was an awesome guy yeah. firefighter you know he was 43 years old wow you know we had uh I mean I could speak the, for an hour on Casey you know um I think when you put things in perspective and you know how every day really is a gift and and i love you know just trying to live i try to do the next right thing you yeah know? and i try to live life 
to the fullest and that's all you really can do yeah i, f- I feel <laughs> like you have a really simple equation and for everyone it's not maybe for other people it's not that simple but you've been able to figure out a way to make it very simple and i think like that humbleness of waking up and knowing that every day is a gift is a is literally a superpower and i think it's it you might underestimate it cuz that's just how you live your life but uh, i try to i'm not perfect yeah of course you know not yeah. every I'm, nobody I, is i try to but uh, you know what's funny about you when i first met you <laughs> you're a pretty intimidating guy think so <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? Yeah, it's like six up, six foot, <laughs> six feet, and what two thirty? Yes, and just jacked, 20. just just know, mean I'm, mugging, I'm, looking at me like <laughs> I. Some people say I have here? like a mean face, you know? <laughs> mean resting bitch face. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> I just remember like yeah. the first time I came to work for you guys, like Will was like, "Yo, Cliff, can you get Ben paid so you can get out of here?" And you were just staring at me, and I was like, "Nah, we're good. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even need to get paid." Was <laughs> <laughs> but really you were just maybe pro- thinking you were processing right. the situation but you just decided to lock eyes with me <laughs> <laughs> sorry i, don't, I do oh, that good, i love it my wife sometimes i'm like <laughs> she's like did you hear what i just said i'm like no <laughs> i'm just so sorry i did not <laughs> sometimes i'll just be like locked in like you said you know you're a legend cliff <laughs> You're an absolute legend. That's a good life goal, dude. No, but uh, so what? About, are you going to be able to? Are, are we, is this really happening? The the whole world, the countries, every country. In the, how many countries are there? I know you probably there's 195 this. countries that are recognized. Right. How many by, did you knock off the list? I've served about 16 or 17. All right, so got some work to do. So I'm you're like five percent there. Yeah, maybe almost 10 percent. 10 percent? Almost 10 percent. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. 190, 16. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I mean, let's just go seven and a half percent, right? Yeah. But I, I ran into some weird uh, quandaries. Like, I surfed this country called Anguilla, and I had it on the list. Yeah. And I was stoked. And then when I started getting into this, I started reading the country list, and I'm like, wait, Anguilla's not a country. It's a British territory. Take that off the list. Yeah, really. And then I had surfed Tahiti when I was a kid, and I was like, I had Tahiti on the list. Found out it's a territory of France. So take that off the list. Oh. So then all these places had to come off my list. And then another thing that happened to me was I went to England and everybody counts England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland as the UK. So that only counts as one country. But then you get there and you're like, you meet the people from Wales. And they're like, no, Wales is a separate country. Meet the people from England. England's a separate country. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So how does that work? So... It's like I have we to. We need to call Andrew Cotton. He we need not. to call Cotty right now, because <laughs> then he'll tell you Cornwall is a separate country. Yeah. But we need to get. Uh, what I need to do is I need to stick to my guns and just say like this is what counts. But I'm going to explore every avenue that I can while I'm on these trips. But then the other flip side is I'm not made of money, so it's not like we went to England and it was possible for me to get. Just in that trip, we got to Wales yeah. and we got to England and it wasn't it wasn't really feasible for me to do any more because I couldn't just keep traveling. I had to be home to work. I had responsibilities. So, so it's, it's going to be a journey. If one of your fans gave you $1, I just figured it out. That's a good... Can I give you the first do- dollar? <laughs> no, but think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Yo, maybe not a dollar, but you see where my head's going. I, I see I, I what think you're saying. Everybody Will's would going love in to see you right now. surf every country. There's nobody yeah. of any or one of your fans. We got would. one. Thanks, buddy. Is this Scoot and Surf? Yo, so, <laughs> so wait, my, this is your week pay. One dollar. Thank you. <laughs> and for the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you were at the I, camp today, right? Yeah. So here you go. Another dollar. <laughs> Two dollars. Um, no, okay, so okay. <clears throat> there's ways to go about it, right? <laughs> right for right now. Um, just I know you don't want to ask people for money. No, I don't obviously. like to do that. Not your fans. So, I, I think, but everybody can afford one dollar. So for right now, what I'm okay. gonna do is am I onto something? <laughs> you're onto something <laughs> okay. for sure. But like, I, I, can't, I, know, I, do I can't do that. You know what I mean? I I can't bring I know, myself to do that. Okay. Um, but Sorry. no, you're good. <laughs> Maybe you can raise the money for me. 
yeah. Well, we you got we got it. You got to do it. wait. So it, is it a world record? I'm like intrigued by this. It would be a world record. Yeah. Nobody's. I don't done think that. anyone's and even considered has it. Any, it. But do you have the world record? Well, the national record for all the states. Nobody's done. Yeah, that. no one's done it. So is that in the Guinness World Record? No, they won't let me in because they told me I have to go back with orange buoys and I have to film myself surfing ten feet across. And I was like, guys, you can just watch in the video. I surf 10 feet across. I can't go back to all the states. Really? And they're like, sorry, bro. No record. Um, Maybe you should have done that before you went. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, I wasn't basing my thing off Guinness Book. Yeah. You were At just the end of the day, I don't care. You I doing, personally. It doesn't matter. You were just doing it for the salt. I don't so. care about the Guinness yeah. Book. I really don't. I do, though. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get. Yeah. Meaning, uh, you know what I'm saying? Look, I know what you're saying. When dude. when they caught the biggest wave in the world, yeah, my boy Kocha, yeah, was holding that Guinness World Record. I love that kid. Yeah, and that was like a big deal. No, that's a huge you know? deal. And you're in the books. It's a huge deal. You know? and that's different though. He surfed an 85 foot wave. <laughs> I know, but it's a big. That's if you're in the Guinness Book of World Records, you're like on another level. So here's a better way to do it. Okay, sorry. We could just, we could petition the Guinness World Record. You, Scoot and Surf could sponsor this, get like 100,000 people to sign a piece of paper that says I should be in it because they saw the proof. Right. That's another way of doing it. And then as far as the countries, right now I'm just going to be just personally funding it and uh, we'll see what happens. I think people have to find out that I'm serious. Yeah. So I think once I'm 25, 50, 75 countries in, someone's going to be like, dude, this guy is not playing around. All right. Can Scoot and Surf sponsor one of the trips, like one of the countries? Uh, you guys sponsor me enough. <laughs> no, no. But can, <laughs> Will, can we just pay for at least <laughs> one of the flights and one of the countries? Will's got his calculator. Hotels? <laughs> no, but think about it. Can, can we Yo, just sponsor on. one of the countries? Okay. We're going to Japan. You want to go? Okay, okay. Do you want to go? I would love to go. Okay, cool. We're going to Japan. Talk to my manager. Okay, he's, well, he's already done already. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like both both the, I was going to say both the Cliff <laughs> brothers, both the Scoot brothers have like similar ideas that just intersect at certain points. It's a good time. You guys are accidental geniuses. So you're doing, By you're already doing, you guys already had a conversation. We about talked it. about some things. Will makes me sign NDAs every time I hang out with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need to get Elon Musk on ball. I feel like he can get you around quicker. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. That would be good. Elon. Yeah, and his internet could sponsor our phones and then we could just have <laughs> unlimited uploading power. I'm listening, Will. What do we got? He's proven that the NDAs work. Yeah. I think. Um, Look, man, I think this needs to happen. Yeah. You know, and, you know, for anybody that's listening here, I know I'm going back to the sobriety message and yeah. stuff like that. Let's just, talk. You know, I do. I do want to say if there is people listening, you know, I live a sober life. The same what you were saying, like. You know, I don't, I just, I choose not to drink. And I know that there's no way if I was like, I wake up early every day. Yep. I have like, I'm pretty, pretty regimented. I heard you're on the beach at 4.50. Yeah, so I, I'm up early. Impressive. I do my work. I work out like, and I feel like I get a lot, I get a lot accomplished because I'm like, I'm focused. You're I'm awake. Here, I'm awake. You're I'm like, I'm ready for my day. If I was drinking and doing other things. Like, I feel like it's just, like, two worlds. Well, you'd never be the yeah. man that you, you are today. Never, you it would can't. be totally different. It's impossible. So Cause I think if anybody's listening, you know, like, I, I felt like, like I was saying, like, that little thing in my head, like, I should share that to let yeah. people know that, you know, you know it is important. Look, I, I've, when I first met you guys, I actually didn't know that you, you guys were sober. And I was obviously stoked when you guys shared that with me after a couple times of working together. And, uh. I mean, that brought me a whole new level of energy working with you guys. But uh, I also didn't want to press you on the podcast. Okay. I was going to ask you, yeah, but yeah. I said, you know what? That's for him to share, but I'm happy that you I'm did. I'm happy I did. You know, it is and, important. Uh, been, it's been, 
you know, a, a, many days, you know, a long time. You know, I was like, in my, how long you been sober? Like, uh, like 16 years. Let's clap it up 20, for that. 20. Yeah. 16 years. Yeah, That's so amazing. I, 20, Cliff. I turned 24. Congratulations to you. When I was 24 years old and I decided, you know, I just want a different path. And I'm so grateful for that moment. That's amazing, dude. And look what look at the impact that you've made on the world from that decision. Yeah. I look at I look at mine as every single thing that's happened to me has been based off of that decision. And I'm sure yeah, it's probably everything. a similar everything and thing anything. with your life. I think, you know, I can base my whole life. There's no way I would be here right now speaking with you. Being stoked with my dog noodles and my wife and my house <laughs> and everything that I, you know, if I was still on that path. You know, I'm I, very grateful for that. I refer to it as the final cheat code to unlock all levels. Yeah. And we're still working on it. Everyone's yeah. still playing the game, but we just have that cheat code. And I really cannot think of a higher point that we can get with this conversation. So it's been Thank an you. honor talking yeah. to you, Thank Cliff. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Ben. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Cliff Scudin, ladies and gentlemen, the guy that took a 50-foot Nazare bomb on the head as he paddled, the guy that's been sober for 17 years. 16, seven, 16. The guy that's been sober for 16 years. <laughs> the dude running the show here in Long Beach. Yeah. Scudin Surf, Cliff Notes. Cliff Notes? That's the name of your show. What's the name of your show? Fully Nuking Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that right, what we were on just yeah. now? We'll at see the, you next time. At Jay's. Pew. Ford Media. Ford Media. All right, let's put this in the beginning. Are we still rolling? All right, I'm going to cut this for the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Gravy here. We are at Ford Media here in Rockville Center, New York. Huge shout out to Jay for letting us use the studio. Today we're going to be interviewing one of my favorites, my second favorite surfer in the world. He doesn't know it yet. His name is Cliff Scudin, and he's a legend. Let's rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs>